The outcome of the presidential election took a whole lot of people by surprise. Not only was it a close race, but it nearly broke up marriages and divided families, showing us just how split the nation is. Not only along party lines, lines of gender and race. In fact, take a look at these survey results from the University of California. It shows large majorities of Latinos, blacks and Asians voted for Democrat Hillary Clinton. Only about a third of whites did and more than half voting for Donald Trump. Well, joining us now to talk about some of what this study found is Dr. Robert Price from Metropolitan State University of Denver. So thank you so much for being here. Well, thank you. First, talk about the study. Where did it come from? How did you get involved? Sure. So this is a study of about 10,000 people, individuals across the nation. Uh, it's a fantastic opportunity to collaborate among 55 institutions, 86 uh, different scholars, each pitching in a few questions. Uh, and so we can get a really in-depth, fairly unique and, and really large-scale sample of particularly racial and ethnic minority groups within the country. So your role in this study then? So my role was small financially, added a few questions. Um, mostly I was looking for effects of migration and how individuals uh, and migration across the United States for racial and ethnic minorities changes their political opinion and, and changes the states and the nature of politics. Well, explain that then. What does migration have to do with politics? Sure. Well, it has a lot. Uh, for the most part, what we see when effects of migration are, one, if there's large migra migratory patterns, and two, that those migra migrants are very different than the native uh, folks within states or counties or municipalities, uh, you can see a large change. Uh, for the most part, theory suggests that actually more conservative people tend to move, uh, but also we've seen greater patterns of folks moving into urban areas, and those tend to be drawn uh, by, or those tend to be migrants that are a bit more liberal and a little bit more cosmopolitan. Hmm. Okay, so talk about some of the other issues that, sure. that came to light in Sure, this. and this is a big study, so lots of issues. Um, there are some similarities uh, in terms of the anger, for instance, uh, majority of all three groups, white, Latino, Asian American, and African American, all were angry or reported being angry sometimes or often. But there were some differences. Uh, some of those differences are clear policy differences in terms of repeal of Obamacare. Uh, majorities of all groups wanted to see some sort of, uh, one, some sort of uh, replacement and then improvement, not necessarily repeal, but certainly among Latinos, African Americans, and Asians, the preference uh, for uh, reform rather than repeal was much higher. So just for clarity then, when was this study done? When were these people asked these questions? Sure, this study was fielded between early December, December 3rd, and through February 17th. It was an online survey, so we had a lot of time. But one of the difficulties and why it was, took so long to get all this information is that we actually offered it in five different languages, so people oh. could answer in languages that were, they were more comfortable in. Huh. So what did that tell you? I mean, can you, can you divide issues literally by where somebody is from? I mean, can you be that simple about their points of view? Um, we can down at some point. Early on, we've just gotten the data, so we're just kind of digging through it and really trying to find out what those fascinating patterns are. But we do know that um, not just racial and ethnic background, but region of origin, na national origin, all tend to affect what people's outlooks are politically. I know um, immigration was a top issue for 30% of Latinos, which is more than double what it was for any other group. Where are some of the other areas where you saw some big disparities? Right. So we saw big disparities in the prioritization, right? All groups had concern about economics uh, and job creation, but immigration was one of those big ones. And remarkably, actually, African Americans saw immigration as a very low priority. Mm -hmm. So that you know, suggests that maybe there's not such conflict within Latino African American populations. Um, other elements like spending more traditional uh, kind of questions, spending on education, mm -hmm. right, what we should do about climate change, both of those types of questions tended to suggest that people of color tended to be more liberal, tended to approach and approve of democratic strategies or policies more so than whites. Yeah. Uh, um, I mentioned how different ethnic groups voted in the election, more than half of whites voting for Trump. What does that say about the racial divide in our country? Can you interpret from that? Right. Well, uh, certainly we don't live in a post-racialized society, right? We have not only racial differences that are clear among many major important policy issues, uh, but also clear divisions, not just in vote choice, but also in partisan affiliation. If you take a look down into where, where people affiliate with parties, where they think that their votes were going to come down the line, uh, there's a clear distinction. Uh, majorities, uh, vast majorities of whites tend to vote for Republican candidates and, and affiliate with Republican parties. Uh, the opposite is actually true for 
uh, Latinos, African Americans, and Asians. So given what you've learned from this study, are there assumptions you can make about what we might see in 2018, for example? Yeah, well, I think we're going to see similar types of politics in 2018 mm. and then in 2020 going forward with the presidential election. Uh, the bases of each of those parties, respectively, are very different. Uh, campaigns and candidates will be approaching those parties, you know, approaching those voters with the intent of mobilizing their and exciting their bases. Uh, and those are going to be very different messages given very different racial and ethnic groups. Yet we're dealing with some other factors right now, I think, with you know outside influences like the whole fake news issue, for example. Right. And how that all plays in, we don't know. Yeah. I mean, what we do know is early socialization tends to be a fairly strong uh, predictor of what your party and where your vote is. People don't often change parties. Uh, and so as we see in 2012 and 2016, uh, those, particularly among young voters, are going to be established voting patterns that are going to take them throughout their adulthood. It'll be interesting to see what happens uh, since we just, uh, Colorado just uh, allowed to uh, let everyone vote in the primary. So that, that might change some dynamics. To right. And so you're the, certainly going to be. Here's a head show. That's right. And we're going to we're going to approach independent voters much more aggressively during primary season than we have in the past. OK. Look forward to talking with you again as you uh, come up with more studies. Dr. Preuss, thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate your time. We'll be right back.